War dogs? More like corn dogs. Welcome to Movies with James. I'm James, and today we're talking about War Dogs. This movie I was very excited to see, looking forward to it. The trailer, amazing, spectacular. They marketed heavily, so you know, I saw the trailer a bunch of times. We all know the whole 50 50 joke was coming. Still killed, still killed. Very funny. It stars Miles Teller, Jonah Hill, Bradley Cooper, you know, three big shots. It's directed by Todd Phillips. Um, if you don't know him, he did Hangover 1, 2, and 3, Old School Road Trip. He does a lot of, you know, funny but dramatic, cool cinematic movies. Good director. It got a 60 on Rotten Tomatoes, which honestly isn't that bad for uh, these kind of movies, these, you know, zero to hero kind of films. Okay, so 60%. Going into it, all my friends were like, oh, it's way better than that. But I don't know. It might be worse, it might be better. Let's get into this movie. So as I said, everyone was telling me, it's amazing, it's so good, you gotta see it. I'm a skeptic, but I went, and I'll tell you, I understand why everyone likes it. It's very, you know, pow, in your face, very, oh, that's cool, look how cool I am. It's kind of a cliche, you know, zero to hero narrative. Lord of War, Limitless, Blow, Wolf of Wall Street. They're very inspirational movies, but the whole concept is there's some loser who's just, you know, being a loser all of a sudden, oh, he finds this really cool gray area of the law that he's gonna manipulate, whether it be drugs, guns, stock market, whatever it is, and then they become, they don't just become, you know, stable in their income, no, they become fucking loaded and start spending all their money, and then, since they're all fucking idiots, they cause problems in their life and they lose everything or they get attacked by people, it's just the same fucking story every time. Though the people who make these kind of movies love to go, this is a true story. Because people who watch these movies, they go, I'm gonna do that, buddy. I'm gonna do that. We're losers now, man. We're losers now. But watch, these guys are losers. These guys are losers. But now, guess what? They're arms dealers. They're drug dealers. They're making bank. I'm telling you, it's a way to make people feel good about themselves, and that's why they like the movie, because they think they're gonna become like these people. But don't get me wrong, you know, these kind of movies are fun, they're inspirational, they're entertaining. Like, I watched Limitless the other day, killer film. Total bullshit though, total bullshit. The last thing I wanna say about these films is that people like to watch them and go, ooh, how can I do that? How can I go from zero to hero? And they all kind of skip the part where they go from zero to like basically hero, you know? It's like, oh, hey, I'm a, I'm a massage therapist loser. I have to rub dudes all day for money. All of a sudden, my buddy who already owns a gun business and selling guns making a lot of money hires me and then they can become more successful as a successful business. That's the story. He's a massage therapist, his buddy moves to town who's already a successful arms dealer basically, and then when he, for some reason when the massage therapist joins, they become really successful. So, I mean, Jonah Hill character, he is already, you know, successful as it is, but they become really successful. All right, let's talk about the goods, the meat, and potatoes of this movie. There's a lot of uh, things that I really enjoyed, um, a lot of things I didn't like, but we'll get to that later. So the best thing about these Zero to Hero movies is that they have some of the coolest, most, uh, just, the mo you know the feeling you get when you're in the theater and you go, oh, that's fucking cool, man, that's fucking neat. You know, like when the Wolf of Wall Street was doing the thing, or I don't know, when the Terminator's like, I'll be back. It's neat. And there's one scene, uh, when you pair a really cool shot, a really, you know, rural scene with like the perfect song, it's pretty awesome. They do a bunch of those, just perfect song matching to badass scenes. You don't go to this movie for the story. You know what's going to happen. They're going to sell guns. They're going to fuck up. They're going to try and solve it. You clearly know that. You know, this is not the movie Seven. You don't want to know what's in the box. Also, with these kind of action-y yet funny movies, they have a lot of good comic relief. Jonah Hill did a good job. Um, Miles Teller, he's a killer actor, even though it, like, it's almost like he's just a dude who like is really good at just being a different person. Like, it's weird. Great actor, killer. Bradley Cooper, he just is good at slicking back his hair. In my opinion, that's his job. I slick back my hair really well. I'm like the man at it. Plus, Todd Phillips probably likes him. Anyway, I'm not gonna get in the bureaucracy of Hollywood. Lastly, it's just a fun movie. It's an entertaining movie. It's a great movie that you're, ne you're not gonna get sick of. It's always fun to watch. Okay, 
it's time to talk about the bads. Now, I hate to, you know, ream on this movie because I enjoyed watching it so much, but uh, there are a couple of things that just... Uh, uh, number one, Jonah's fucking laugh. Jonah Hill is a great actor, but he always plays the same kind of actor, like he'll be a certain character and will have certain idiosyncrasies that are considered funny because he's doing them. You know, The Wolf of Wall Street, he had his fake teeth. Moneyball, he was just kind of like, mm, shy. He always has this little thing that people enjoy about him, but you know he's acting and doing it for the role, if that makes sense. He has this laugh, it's kind of like, <laughs> I can't even do it, it's so annoying, but it's clearly, they're trying to portray the character he's playing as kind of a irritating person, which he is. But the laugh is clearly part of the acting he's doing and you're, you're laughing because it's clearly him acting. I get it though, they're trying to show that he's an irritating character, but he's irritating to begin with. He didn't need to laugh, in my opinion. Another thing, there's a scene when they're in the club and Jonah Hill's hitting on a girl, all of a sudden, Dan Bilzerian pops out and he says, What's going on? And he punches Joan in the face. That's his whole scene. I'm like, why is he in the movie? I didn't know he's an actor. Okay. I, I guess he wanted like to get a film credit of, you know, club douche number one. Whatever. I just thought it was out of place and kind of broke the fourth wall of the movie. But whatever. I'm sure he just paid to get in there. One last thing I wanted to address. Usually when they do this zero to hero kind of story, someone's either really depressed or really poor or really struggling. Jonah Hill is having a blast selling guns, making, you know, 200 grand every eight weeks. And Miles Teller character, he is, you know, a massage therapist making 75 bucks an hour and has a super hot, like, Colombian girlfriend. I don't know why he needed more money. He seemed to have, like, his whole life set. I mean, he had a hot girlfriend and made 75 bucks an hour. He's ahead of me in all aspects of life. So, yeah, now I feel bad about myself. Thanks a lot. Okay, one last, last thing. Jonah Hill is massive all of a sudden. I thought he lost a bunch of weight. He ballooned. He's so big, it looks like a workout to be that big. Like, it seems strenuous to gain that much weight. And I hate to say it, though, I like him better that way. That's very uh, selfish of me, but I'm just being honest. All right, it's time to rate this bitch. Again, five categories. Story, acting, production, creativity, and watchability. All right, the story. The story of the whole poor guy becoming super rich selling something kind of illegal has been done a million times. It's nothing new. They found some example of this in the news and they blew it out of proportion. I'm not gonna give this one a great story, but it's compelling, but it's nothing special. Three. Acting. Acting was amazing on the part of Miles Teller. Mark my words, he's going to be the next Leonardo DiCaprio. I promise you that. Okay? But he's actually going to win more, you know, Academy Awards. Mark my words. Seriously, mark them down on a calendar or an iPad or whatever kind of pad you use. Mark them. Jonah Hill, on the other hand, is a good actor. Clearly, he's better than most people are at acting. But he has this thing about him where he's clearly acting. You know, he's being a character, and I understand that's part of, you know, his shtick, but it can be kind of obnoxious in a way. Again, the laugh. Bradley Cooper, AKA, I slick my hair back for a living, but it's just not, nothing, not a five. That makes it a four. Four in acting. That's a good score. You're welcome. Four. The production's good. It, uh, reminded me a lot of Pain and Gain, the movie. Um, Michael Bay-esque. It's a very Michael Bay-esque movie. Like, if I, if I saw the movie and had to guess who directed it, I would guess Michael Bay. It's just really well put together. I really enjoyed the whole uh, concept. They, they broke it into chapters and had a little text going through, and the, the scenes were so streamlined. It was enjoyable to watch. Five. Creativity. Now, we all know this is based on a true story. Yeah. Vaguely. They should add that in the credits. But... Therefore, it's not creative. Also, this concept of zero to hero has been done a million times. Two. Two out of five. Watchability. This is where this movie just blows my mind. It's so enjoyable to just look at. 
You sit on the couch and you stare at it and it's not like you want to know what's going to happen. You're just enjoying the process. It's kind of like giving a big old pile of snack to an addict. They put it in their arm and they're like, oh my God, this rocks. Th these rocks rock. This rocks. Same concept. It's so enjoyable. Watchability. I'd give it a six, but I can't. Five. Three plus four plus five plus two plus five. It's 19. 19 times 4. That would be 76. 76! Wow. So it did better than Rotten Tomatoes. I gave it a 60, I gave it a 76. So clearly mine's right. That's amazing. Who knew? See, this is the thing about Rotten Tomatoes. They're always off the actual, you know, number. Because I, I deduct the actual number of the rating based off numeric facts and empirical evidence. And then Rotten Tomatoes just gives a vague number based off their opinion. That's why my reviews are so important to this, you know, medium. I give the real answer. Okay, some final thoughts I have on this movie. Go watch it. You gotta watch it. It's fun to watch. It's a great group movie because it's not like you gotta pay attention too much. You can kind of wander. You can be kind of stoned, fucked up, whatever you like. Great for junkies if you're into that. It's an awesome movie for a child. It's a great movie for children who have really cool parents. It's not a good movie for children who have, you know, nerds as parents and don't let them watch cool movies. It's nothing you're gonna, you know, go, that's my favorite movie, that's such a good movie. It's a fun movie. It's an enjoyable movie. It's a pleasurable movie. Alright, thank you for watching. This has been Movies with James, War Dogs Edition. I appreciate if you subscribe, like, and do whatever you'd like with the buttons below. Or don't, you probably won't, but hey, if you do, I might just be happy.